Hey, Ben here with Stu on the Lake. Hey, this is a fun, fun deal here uh, that I've been trying to get together. Uh, here's Jordy Johnson. And Jordy said, Ben, I want to take, I want to do my gentler, kinder set. I'd like to try that watercolor painting. And uh, but the paints are just so damn expensive. Well, Jordy's got all the material. Well, not the water material, but he's got the uh, beach combing. There's a beautiful landscape he can do. So I decided I'm going to send Jordy a set. It looks just like my set. I want to make a duplicate. And I'm going to put it in a box like this. There's a, his box is in the corner. Here's mine. This is all my watercolor stuff. I'm going to give him the exact same paints, the exact same brushes, and a kit. And uh, to include the tape and the watercolor paper and the whole nine yards. And then I'm going to set him up with stuff. Here's a little tin uh, of excess paints that my daughter handed me that she got from my mother-in-law. Said she's never going to use them. And... Uh, this came about when Jordy bought the paint. I said that I buy expensive paints, uh, the artist quality, professional quality. So we got him a box. I got him the same brushes that I'm going to have in there. And uh, there's a, a spray bottle that he gets with that. And I'm going to keep one for myself. And then there's a wash brush, a cheap, cheap dollar wash brush. So we're going to open all these up and set them up. It'll be kind of fun. Uh, and Jordy, hey, if you don't, you know, you give this a shot. You don't have to film it, that sort of thing, but uh, give it a try. Might work well for your other channel. It might work uh, for interchanging here. I'm going to leave my watercolor series. I think I'm going to call this uh, Jordy's watercolor set number or watercolor number four, because I believe that's the fourth uh, watercolor painting that I've put in. So we got a box. I'm going to send him. Uh, I think five Christmas cards because Christmas is coming up and the Christmas cards are the easiest to paint. They're very simple. These are uh, not folded, but here's uh, one, two, three, four, five, I believe. I'm going to pull out of there and I'm going to send him five envelopes. So he'll be all set up. And the envelopes are in the bottom. This comes in a kit. Uh, one of the, uh, probably next year, we'll get around to it. Here's one, two, three, four, five envelopes. So they, like I said, it comes in a box. I think there's probably a hundred in the box. I'm, I'm guessing. I don't remember. I'd have to look it up. But those are going uh, up to Canada uh, to Jordy here in the next. Uh, try to get them out Monday if I can. We're going to build him a color chart that matches what he's doing there, and I'll send that along to him, and I'll make it the same as mine. He's going to have to get his own uh, piece of cardboard. This is just the back of. Something, and if you remember looking back, and probably number three watercolor that was the cheap watercolors that I bought for $1.99. But uh, I'm sending him a watercolor pad that matches mine. These all, all this stuff came uh, from Hobby Lobby, and I picked them up. So you'll get the paper, the kit, the cards, the whole nine yards. And this uh, video here is, is the setup that I'm going to send him. It's just going to be a basic setup. It's not a minimal palette. It's not uh, special palettes. It's just the uh, colors of the rainbow. Roy G. Biv. I'm going to put those in these two palettes here. They're little cheap things. They're probably four or five bucks a piece. They work out just fine. It appears that they've got 20 slots in them. I'm going to build two duplicate ones because I'm going to work from the same palette that uh, Jordy's working for, uh, working or has. And uh, I'm going to do a series of four or five here in the next couple months of real simple beginner drawings and uh, it works for everybody else too if you uh, want to kind of try to stay along and paint along I'll have the same so I'm gonna I picked up a series of brushes that uh, work well with watercolor and again I'm gonna stick with the same brushes that I sent him I kind of picked up duplicates of those and uh, they'll go in his box and get ready to go so there's all my brushes. I'm going to have to segregate those out so that I, I make sure that I'm not painting with the brush or a color of paint that uh, Jordy doesn't have in there. So if you wanted to follow along with this, you can uh, follow the video. You can go down out and pick up some paints. You can go pick up some brushes. I don't remember what this brush set was. Probably seven dollars, somewhere in that range, and uh, they work out to be good watercolor uh, brushes, uh, more in the Chinese style. 
kind of appointed and mid thing, and we'll we'll talk about those a little bit more as we as we uh, go along. So we got some brushes there. Watercolor brushes are not necessarily expensive. Um, they, a lot of folks like to paint with one or two brushes, and you can certainly get away with that. Uh, the, the Chinese Hake H A K E brush. I believe it's Chinese, might be Japanese, heck, I don't know. Uh, Jordy can figure that out while he takes his trip to Asia. Uh, but uh, they're cheap brushes, they're, uh, and they work real well with watercolor. Here's another cheap watercolor set, and I'm going to pull uh, several of these out and split them off on the side. So, I'll quit talking for a minute while we put these brushes in there. And you see those ones I'm throwing on the side are going to Jordy's kit. The ones on the left are going in my kit. Here's another set. I think this one was probably $15. That uh, has enough brushes. I want him to have enough brushes to, to, to get started and get going and to have a whole kit ready to go. Now you can take this kit out uh, when Jordy goes uh, out, uh, maybe goes out and set. You saw at the beginning there, he has uh, some pretty great landscapes out on the beach there. Although those, a lot of those are pretty complicated to paint, but uh, you can go out and do what they call plein air painting. So plein air means outside the air in French, I believe. And you take your kit along with you, and you take your easel or your board and your paints, and, and this is a perfect way to do it with one little kit. And you set up on a rock or you sit on one of those trees that's too big to carve out there, and you, you do a quick, um, take an hour or so, half an hour and do a quick sketch. Now, a lot of the famous painters used to go and initially uh, they would do, use watercolor because of the transportability of it. And they would go out and they would uh, uh, set up and, and do their initial sketch of a famous oil painting or a painting they were intended to do with the watercolor. So that works out pretty good. And uh, here's a little live video as we select the paints. So the first thing we're going to do, we'll take a sheet of that out and we're going to build a chart. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and ten. So he's got Too many. One, two, one, two, many. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, now we got ten on this side, so one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, nine, ten. And we'll put the thumbprint in just so we know which side. All right. So we're going to load two identical palettes and get ready to do that. So we need ten. We need 10 colors. So let's go with Roy G. Biv. So here's a lizard and crimson, and that's a red. Here's cadmium light yellow, and here's alizarin crimson. So two alizarin crimson. So alizarin crimson, red, and what do we got here? 
This is cadmium red. So those are three. Those are three good reds. So we got red, 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 Roy, red, orange. So we need some orange. It looks like an orange. Cadmium red pale hue. We might use that one as an orange. So these paints all came from my mother-in-law's collection who passed away 10, 12 years ago. She would go down and she would take art classes and uh, like every couple weeks she would go down and pay a lady and they would paint various different things, floral things. She didn't save any of her paintings, which is kind of a shame. And I would suggest that you do. Uh, that's probably one of my favorite colors. Quinacridone red. So there's another red. Alright, so we didn't really get an orange in there. Let me check mine and see if I've got an orange. Burnt sienna. Cadmium orange. Alright, so there we go. So there's red. And we're going to narrow this down. Alright. So we're going to put the corner down back. We're going to go with the cadmium red. Make sure you got paint there. Yep. Cadmium red. Alizarin crimson. And let's stay with that. Alright, so we got red, orange, yellow. There's cad yellow light. Gambage. I like that for a light yellow. And lemon yellow. We're going to pass on that one. Cadmium lemon. We might go with that. Windsor yellow. People like Windsor yellow. Let's go with Cad Light, Windsor yellow. Here, cadmium lemon. And gambage. I lost the words of that. Alright. <coughs> so those will work. Cad yellow light, Windsor yellow. So let's go with that. And then Cad lemon. And stay out of that one. Okay, so red. So we've got red, orange, yellow. Roy G. Bib. So green. Green. So there's a. Jordy's favorite color, Hooker's Green. There's another Hooker's Green. And let's go with a Sea Green. And an Olive Green. Alright, so we're done with the greens. What's that? Phthalo blue. All right. So Roy G. Red, orange, yellow, green. Blue. Now blue. This is a phthalo blue. I like that. This is cerulean blue. All right. 
and that's cerulean blue. And that's French ultramarine. I'll leave that out. Let's see what we got here. Permanent blue ultramarine. I might save that one out. Prussian blue. There we go. So Prussian blue. And then cobalt blue. So there's our blues. Ones are blue. French ultramarine blue. I'm getting them narrowed down. What do I got here? Thalo blue. We're going to stay out of that. Alright. Indigo. Chinese white. Brilliant blue. Antwerp blue. Alizarin crimson. So there's a Roy G R O Y G B Indigo There's a violet Chinese white Sepia Indigo. So there's indigo. indigo. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Ultramarine violet. All right. So there's our colors of the rainbow. Now we're going to add to that some sepia, some Chinese white, and some Payne's gray. some yellow ochre. Let's go with that yellow ochre. Magenta. Neutral tint. Whatever the heck it is. Well, that's just a neutral tint. We don't, we don't need that. Cobalt green. Van Dyke Brown, that can't hurt. Permanent Rose and Ivory Black. You don't need black. Okay, so there's what we got. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Then we're going to add these in sepias and yellow ochres. So we got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we got one too many. So out of that one, let's take a blue away. That's cerulean. Russian blue, cobalt blue. Let's take this one away. It's a phthalo. Alright, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 
So we got 20 here. So let's start on, let's start right here. This one first. Lizard Crimson. So we're going to go in both palettes. And then the remainder of this will go in Joy's. And then we're going to do that all the way through here. Okay. So we got Cad Red, alright so we're going to start marking down each of, each of the pins as we, we put them in, or, or we started marking them down and you're going to see me go through this. I'm going to run this, it's kind of fun, at 2000 speed, uh, which is ludicrous speed, and as I fill these pallets up. So, there we go. There's the palette all filled up. And now the next thing that we're going to do, and I'm going to run this at ludicrous speed also, you only need a little bit of this paint. This, this tray of paint will probably last you a year, with the exception of a few of them that you might use a lot of. Uh, so, this is quite a bit. And uh, out of the, uh, the 20, 20 paints there, as you can imagine, if you paid, just say, 10 feet there, between $7 and $15 a tube, so you, you can do the math. We'll just say 10, 10 by uh, 20. That's $200 worth of paint. So we're going to go through ludicrous speed here, and you'll see I'm going to paint each color out in the wash. I've written them down. So this is a reference that goes with that palette that I'm sending out to Jordy. And I, I won't go over the colors in this because it's insane to do that. But you can see that I'm just using a very light wash, and in between each time that I'm, I'm making sure I have a clean brush, you notice I had two glasses of water there. So I'll use the one glass of water to wash it off, and then, and then I'll finish it off with the second one and wipe it on a paper towel. So we don't get any color mixes in here. We're not trying to do a color chart like we did in uh, the number two lesson or the number one. Uh, but uh, I would recommend, uh, Jordy, that you set up a chart like the first of those, and you cross these colors over and see what you can get with this palette. This is kind of a strange palette, but it is the Roy G. Biv palette, plus a few added at the end. So colors of the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, blue, green, indigo, and violet. Colors of the rainbow. Now there's some stuff missing. That These are all primary colors, and you can mix anything from the primary colors. Now there's some stuff in here that we should have had, some burnt umber, uh, burnt sienna, uh, things like that. I think we put some sepia in there, but those are good landscaping colors and you can build a landscaping palette In fact a lot of uh, a lot of folks work in shades of gray. So a lot of paints gray mixed with a lot of other colors uh, To get their palette. This, this is kind of a bright palette uh, a little bit higher and, and obviously the stuff that uh, I would recommend to start with is things like Christmas cards uh, simple landscape scenes and that sort of thing and then you can develop your own palette and then your palette will uh, evolve over the years, depending on what your mood is and what you're painting. You know, they they talk about uh, different different artists and their and their uh, blue period and their yellow period and their realism period and that sort of stuff. So and if, you, if you if you were to paint and just like carving, if you were to do if you do it for uh, forty or fifty years, your style kind of evolves over time. But this is just a quick color chart. It's set up, and it's set up uh, to tell you what colors are in there. And Jordy has all these colors in his thing. And this says right on the top there, uh, Jordy's color palette. Uh, so I'm, now I'm taking, and some of these have dried a little bit too much, but I'm, I'm pulling out some of the color to show you a little bit lighter. And I, I could have went over these, but you see that's just pulling the pigment out of there. And that's the beauty of water, water coloring. It's kind of pastel. It's transparent, and I talked over myself. And there's Jordy's color palette. So this Jordy's is all run at uh, 2,000 
speech, oh, ready to go. Uh, which again is ludicrous. I've never done that before. I, I didn't. My intention was not to show have Jordy paint point by point, but to give him a concept, to give him an idea, and let him experiment. He's a he's a good painter. I've seen his painters paints before. Uh, I think they were probably acrylics or oils. Some of the stuff he was doing. So here's uh, two cards I'll throw in there and send along with them. They're not pretty. They're painted fast. One's a tree on the left with different colors thrown in there. And the one on the right is the gnomes that we've been doing that caused all this trouble and that sort of thing. And 2,000 times, and I, like I said, I've never uh, ran ludicrous speed like this. And it, it gets kind of choppy, but it is kind of fun. So this guy we gave mittens, we gave feet. You can carve him. Uh, I, I went back and did a little bit of work. I put a, I spilled some red on the corner there, so I added a present to it. I put a little bit of a background in to make it not quite so boring. I did the star, and now I'm pulling them off. So remember, I put the tape on my leg and, uh, and took some of the, the bite off of it, so because it, it will tear the water paper and uh, watercolor paper. And if you uh, do that, and you can pull it off carefully away from the edge. Typically, you don't have to deal with uh, these things. Uh, burning up on you or tearing into the paper. Now, if it does tear into the paper, uh, what you can do is uh, put a little water on it and tamp it down, or uh, hopefully it might be in the part where you would put uh, some masking on it. So there's two banged out, same color palette Jordy has. Uh, two more uh, of those. There's my gray hair sticking in there. When I get home, uh, I've got an Iowa painting this. Uh, when I get home, I'm, I've got the setups coming for it. I'm going to put up. Uh, camera up above my uh, pad and uh, we'll crank out some watercolor paintings for the watercolor series. And there's the two uh, yucky cards with Jordy Johnson's color palette. So, hey, this has been great. That's his palette. That's his color deal that's going on. If you want to follow along, pick out your own colors, Roy G. Biv. I wouldn't recommend you go buy all these colors. A few of them will work. But, uh, hey, here's the start of something fun. Jordy can use it on his channel or his new art channel. Or not use them at all. It'll be kind of fun. Uh, and I already know he can paint. So, hey, thanks a lot. This has been Ben with Stuart on the Lake.